Hey guys, check this out. This is the 3D printed Notos by Plain Print. This is an awesome build. It's a hybrid system between PLA and lightweight PLA to keep this thing lightweight. Uh, this is aerobatic plane for inverted flight, knife edge. This is sweet. I'm excited to fly this thing. Let me take you guys back to the workbench and show you guys how to build it. Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build and assemble the entire plain print Notos. This is a really awesome build uh, for the printing process. Pretty basic, there's not a lot to cover with it. Uh, it does use a hybrid system between PLA and lightweight PLA. Here's a nice diagram that plain print has to show a really easy comparison between the PLA, lightweight PLA, and TPE parts within the build. Now it's important that you do use lightweight PLA in this build uh, to get the CG set right. Also, uh, to get the performance that we're looking for, this is an aerobatic airplane that we want to be able to do some you know, good maneuvers with and stuff uh, with the right power setup and everything. Uh, you know, With the lightweight PLA, it makes it so much lighter and makes it perform better. I did have a video I just uploaded about my lightweight PLA settings and how to print out lightweight PLA. So if you guys are having problems with that, make sure to check out my channel. Uh, the lightweight PLA parts uh, do use minimum movement of the extruder, so there's no retractions. Uh, within the lightweight PLA, very, very minimal. Not quite nothing, but almost nothing. Uh, so like this is the minimal restraining that you're gonna have on your parts. Here's a part in the fuselage, just clean it up a little bit with a with an X-Acto blade. So really easy to clean up the parts for lightweight PLA parts. The regular PLA parts do use uh, the traditional retraction methods. Uh, so make sure to get your retraction settings all set up for your regular PLA parts. Uh, but they do print out pretty easily. Okay, once we have all the parts laid out on the table, uh, just a little bit of cleaning up with a little bit of sandpaper and an X-Acto blade to make sure all the parts fit together easily so that way you have a good uh, glue adhesion uh, and then we'll start assembling this plane. First thing we'll work on to assemble this build is we'll get the slider installed for the canopy. So we'll take a four millimeter carbon fiber rod, cut that to 40 millimeters in length. We'll take this slider and we'll insert it into the fuselage two part. We'll slide in the 40 millimeter carbon fiber rod. We'll be using Zapigat medium CA glue and Zip Kicker CA accelerator for this entire build. Put just a small dab of glue, hit that with CA accelerator to cure it, and then we'll put a rubber band in place. When I printed the parts out, I did make two copies of the parts STL file because there were some parts I wanted in white and some of the parts I wanted in gray. So like that part that was a slider was in gray. And then like these tabs here, I want those in white. So we'll go ahead and insert those in place into fuselage two. These tabs don't need to be glued into the fuselage. Uh, they're just used as alignment tool to get the two parts of the fuselage together. Uh, once we get these two sections together, we'll just continue on with the rest of the parts. Uh, they all glue on pretty easily and pretty self-explanatory. Just add a nice bead of glue right on the edge of that tab on all the parts and glue all the pieces together. Once we have that part of the fuselage all assembled, we'll start working on the landing gear. Uh, so we'll grab all the landing gear parts. We'll take a four millimeter carbon fiber rod, cut that to length, and then uh, we want to sand it down just a little bit so the glue in here is better uh, for the parts that you're going to be gluing. Uh, we're going to glue this into the fittings. Uh, now this part does not need to be glued uh, to the lower part of the landing gear strut, but this upper one does need to be glued uh, to this part of the strut. All right, now we'll go ahead and add three millimeter nuts in place. So we'll use a regular nut on the lower part. And then if you look at the tire, there's a little bit of a lip here. That's gonna go towards the fitting to allow a little bit of a spacer between the wheel and the fitting there. We'll screw that into that regular three millimeter nut. And then we're gonna use a three millimeter lock nut, nylon lock nut uh, for the backside. So we'll tighten that down and loosen up a little bit. Now if you see the wheels are, the spokes are facing opposite directions, it only comes with one STL file. So I just went ahead and mirrored it in Kira to make sure that the wheels uh, are both rolling in the forward direction on the spokes. 
Uh, just an aesthetic thing. It will operate completely fine if you just print out two of the wheels uh, and mount them on. All right, now we're gonna take the fuselage and cut these fittings out of the fuselage so that the landing gear will fit into place. And then we'll just add a two millimeter screw. This is a screw assortment you can uh, purchase off Amazon. There's links in the description below for all the parts I use for this build. Uh, but just some two millimeter screws will attach the landing gear to the fuselage. Same technique for the canopy with these tabs. You don't need to glue those into place. Uh, they're just used as an alignment tool. So we'll just put the tabs in place, put a bead of glue on here, glue the two halves together, and then I'm gonna go take this outside, spray a little bit of gray spray paint on there. For the tail section, we'll grab the vertical stabilizer and another tab, and we'll use the rudder as an alignment tool, put a little bit of glue on this uh, vertical stabilizer, insert that in place, and then once we get it set, we'll take the rudder back off. Uh, now for the rudder, we'll do need to cut this lower piece out, so we'll grab our hot knife to cut this out. And then we'll put our 1.5 mm carbon fiber rod in place, use it as an alignment tool to set this lower part of the rudder. And then we'll put this hinge in place, and slide that 1.5 millimeter rod in again. It will add a little bit of glue to this hinge here and we'll slide this into the fuselage. Once we get it set in place, we'll pull this uh, carbon rod out and let that set. And then we'll add a little bit more glue on there. Once it's all dried up, we can insert the rudder for the final time. We'll cut that carbon fiber rod to length. We'll slide this into place and we'll put a screw to hold the carbon fiber rod in place. Now I'll go ahead and set up the tail wheel. So pretty simple, just set that uh, 1.5 millimeter rod as an axle for the tire, uh, slide these two 1.5 millimeter rods in place, and then we can go ahead and glue that right into the lower part of the fu uh, fuselage, but I'm gonna wait for now because I'm gonna take that off to actually paint it. For painting this build, I'm gonna do it in a few different sections. So I'm gonna start with doing the fuselage and we'll mask off the fuselage. We'll take it outside and I'm gonna use Krylon spray paint to spray paint this. Uh, works really good on the lightweight PLA and the PLA. Okay, now we're going to start assembling the tail section and adding the servos. It's really important for this build not to use cheap servos. I'm going to be using HS50 55 Metal Gear servos for this build. This airplane is designed to do precision aerobatic maneuvers, inverted flight, knife edge, all that kind of cool stuff. And we want to make sure we have really good servos in this build. The first thing we need to do to add the servos is take our hot knife and take these cut out locations out. This is for the servo wires to go into the fuselage. Uh, so there's one on the bottom and then one on each side for the elevator servos. Now I'll grab our servos and our servo brackets. So make sure that our transmitter, we have dual wing and dual elevator selected. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and take our control horns off of our servos. We'll install them into the servo brackets. Now for the elevator servo bracket, we do need to slide this wire between the back of the servo and the servo bracket so that it goes through just like that. So that way, once you add glue to this bracket and it goes into the fuselage, that wire will go right down into the hole in the fuselage. After we add servo extensions to our servos, we'll run a small wire into the fuselage uh, to pull the servo wires through the fuselage. So once we have all the wires pulled through, this is what it'll look like. That's the tube that they go into in the lower part of the fuselage. And on the back here, I just have all the servos uh, sitting in the appropriate places and all the servo wires are running through the fuselage. Now I can go ahead and add glue to the servo brackets and insert them into place. After I put the servos in place, I did check to see if you could get to the servo brackets with a screwdriver and you definitely can uh, access all the mounting screws. 
Uh, so if you want to see the screwdriver will fit. It's a little tight for this screw, uh, but the back screw is okay. Uh, but I think it's probably the easiest way to do it the way I did it with having the servo mounted already on the bracket and then gluing it into place. With the servos installed, we can go ahead and bind the transmitter to the receiver, plug our servo wires in, and we'll cut these control horns down to shape. And then once we have all of the servos centered on our transmitter, all the trims and everything centered, uh, we can go ahead and add a little bit of tape to the rudder there. We'll insert the control horn in place. We'll mark it with a marker, and that's right where our Z-bend needs to be at. So we'll put that Z-bend on there, insert the control horn, uh, and then we can go ahead and cut that to length and add the set screw to the servo. To set up the horizontal stabilizer, we'll need two 4 millimeter carbon fiber rods. Uh, the 110 millimeter one goes in the front and then the 200 millimeter goes in the back. We'll slide on the horizontal stabilizers and then there is one screw that holds on each side on the lower part of the fuselage. Set the elevator, we'll just glue this part onto the elevator and then we'll use uh, TPU hinges. We'll just add a small dab of CA glue to insert those into the elevator. Make sure that we don't use too much glue uh, for all these TPU hinge locations so that way they move nice and easily. So just a small dab here, insert that into the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, and then once we get uh, both of them inserted, make sure that they move easily and see how easy they move here and they just fall right back down. That's how we want it. I'll go ahead and plug the receiver back in and bind that to our transmitter uh, to make sure that the servos are centered. We'll add a little bit of tape to the horizontal to tape it to the uh, tip there. And then we'll add our Z-bend in place. We'll put the control horn in on the servo. We'll mark that with a marker where our Z-bend will be at. We'll cut that to length and then we'll just slide this right into place. Then we can just go ahead and add our set screw to our servo to hold the control horn in place and we'll do the same step on the other side. For the upper wing we'll just go ahead and insert our tabs in place, glue the two halves together uh, and then there's just that tang there on the back of the upper wing and that just slides right into the top of the fuselage. And then there's two screws right down inside here, inside the fuselage. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the motor and the prop to the fuselage. I'm gonna use a 3542 1080 kV motor for this uh, from Leopard Hobby. Make sure that you purchase a motor with the motor shaft in the correct position uh, so that the motor mount works correctly. Uh, there is two motor mounts. There's a 43 millimeter and a 48 millimeter. Uh, and make sure you print these out at ABS or PETG to be more heat resistant uh, with the motor. I'm going to go ahead and use a 13 by 4 prop on this plane. Uh, there's a whole range of motors and props that you can put in this airplane. This airplane has a lot of capability for aerobatics depending on your experience level when it comes to aerobatic flying. Uh, this plane does have good ground clearance to have a pretty good sized prop on here. It's got about 9 inches of clearance between the ground and the center of the prop. Uh, so we can go up to about a 15 inch propeller on here and still have an inch and a half ground clearance. For the motor mount, we'll add the motor mount that came with the motor onto our 3D printed motor mount. And we'll just insert uh, three millimeter screws in place with nylon lock nuts. Make sure that the motor mount is in the correct orientation. Uh, it'll be oriented so that the motor mount is actually about 1.5 degrees to the right. When the motor mount's in the fuselage, this is how it'll look. The motor will sit behind it and then you'll have a prop adapter in the front. Uh, now we'll take our pliers, we'll grab the motor mount from the nose of the plane and we'll add glue uh, onto our motor mount and then we'll just pull this right into place. When we have that set in place, then we can go and just add a little bit more glue on the back side of that to add a little bit more strength to that motor mount. Then we'll slide our motor into place. Make sure that we use a little bit of blue Loctite on these screws. Uh, and we'll screw the motor to the motor mount. We'll add our prop adapter in place. 
Uh, for our propeller, we got to drill out the propeller just a little bit. Uh, then there's an alignment tool uh, that we'll go ahead and slide in from the back side. Okay, well that finishes up the fuselage, so we'll set that aside and start working on the wing. Uh, the wing assembly is pretty easy. There are two sets of wing tips. There's a flat wing tip or more of a performance wing tip. You just have to decide right now when you're doing the build what set of wing tips you want because they are glued on. We'll get all the parts laid out and get them in the right orientation and then we'll go ahead and test fit all of them. So there's this couple of parts that we want to sand down, like this part that goes up against the side of the fuselage. Uh, and then there's a part here that we need to cut out for the servo bracket. We just need to go ahead and cut this tab off of the wing section and then that will slide into the next wing section. So we'll grab our carbon fiber rod and we'll use that as an alignment tool. We'll slide that into these wing sections. It will add glue to the wing and we'll slide them together. Once they're set together, we'll go ahead and pull that carbon fiber rod out. And then we'll do the same thing uh, for this wing section here. We'll put this little tab in place and we'll put our carbon fiber rods in place as an alignment tool. Uh, it's important not to glue these carbon rods uh, in place. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead and add glue to the wing section, slide this into place. Once we have it set, we'll go ahead and pull our carbon fiber rods out. Just like with the elevator, we want to make sure we use a small amount of CA glue to insert these TPU hinges uh, to allow the aileron to move nice and easily. Okay, now we'll go ahead and add our servo to the wing. So we'll go ahead and attach the servo to the servo bracket. Uh, plug that into our receiver, bind that to our transmitter to make sure that the servo is in the centered position. Uh, once we have it in the center position, we'll, we'll cut the control horn down to shape. We'll attach that to our servo, and that way it'll be in the correct orientation. We'll set the set screw in place. Now we'll set up our servo bracket, so we'll attach this with two screws. Make sure it's in this orientation. And now we'll go ahead and slide our servo wire down into the Bowden tube in the wing. And we'll add a little bit of glue to this servo bracket. And we'll slide that down into the wing. Now we'll hold that down until it dries. Once it dries, we can go ahead and remove those screws off that servo bracket. And pull the servo out of the wing. And then we'll add just a little bit more glue to this part of the bracket down in the wing to hold it in place. Uh, and then we'll just reinstall the servo. Now we'll go ahead and add tape to the trailing edge of the aileron and the trailing edge of the wing. And then we'll go ahead and add a Z-bend, put that into our servo control horn. We'll mark where the control horn will be at on the wing. We'll put a Z-bend on there, set that in place, and then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of glue and glue that to the aileron. Now I'll just go ahead and repeat that entire process for the other wing.
Okay, now we got most of it assembled. It looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some more decals. So for the bottom of this plane, I wanna make it very noticeable that the bottom is the bottom of the airplane and the top is the top of the airplane because it is made for aerobatics and will be flying inverted and knife edge and stuff. So we wanna make sure that we have a good paint scheme that really stands out. So we're gonna paint this checkers on the bottom of the main wing and then we're gonna also match this up and do a checkers on the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer also. So we'll go ahead and take off the horizontal and the elevator and we'll go ahead and mask off that also and do the same checkers I did on the main wing. All right, now doesn't that look awesome? That'll be the bottom of the airplane. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach the horizontal and the elevator back onto the fuselage and we'll put the upper wing back on also. To attach the main wing to the fuselage, we'll need our carbon fiber rods, our tensioners, and all the other little parts that will hold the wing onto the fuselage. So the first thing that we're gonna start out with is we're gonna take the fuselage and we're gonna cut out these holes that the carbon fiber rods go into. So we'll clean those up and then there's a four millimeter hole. We'll need to drill that out in the back of the fuselage part. And we'll add this uh, little piece on to the fuselage. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Then we'll cut one of our carbon fiber rods at 500 millimeters. Uh, and then we'll put a four millimeter one in the rear part. Uh, this is for the angle of attack adjustment. And then the 500 millimeter one will go right into this uh, part of the fuselage here. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the angle of attack adjustment on the wing. Uh, so we'll grab our wing sections and we'll grab all of our angle of attack uh, parts. Now there's an R and an L on each one of the parts to indicate which side of the wing they go on to. So we'll put this section in first. We'll add screws to attach that to the wing. Uh, now there's the part that goes over top of it uh, that's also labeled with an R. And we'll go ahead and insert a screw in the back of this piece first and we'll loosen it so we can move it. And now we can set the adjustment. There's all kinds of different settings that you can set up for this, uh, all different ranges of angle of attack. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the 0.5 millimeter basic setting recommended by plane print. Uh, and then once I fly it some and I get more experience with it, I can adjust it as I want to very easily uh, just out on the field. So now we're gonna go ahead and add these tensioners in place so they just screw right into the wing sections. Uh, and then once you have both of them in there, inside the fuselage, this little gray uh, clip will go inside there and it just clips right under that TPU uh, section there. So we'll go ahead and glue that right into the fuselage. And then while we're here, we can go ahead and glue on the battery tray inside the fuselage here also. All right, now this thing is looking awesome. It's pretty much all assembled. We just gotta attach the wings in place. So just put this one meter long carbon fiber rod in place, slide that into the fuselage. We'll uh, insert that TPU uh, tensioner into that bracket inside the fuselage, and we'll attach the other wing. Okay, now we can finish up our electronics. So we'll plug our servos into our receiver. Uh, we'll hook up our ESC. I'm gonna use a 60 amp ESC. Uh, and we'll use a piece of Velcro to attach that to the side of the fuselage. We'll put a piece of Velcro on the battery tray to hold the battery in place. We'll put our 2200 milliamp 35C four cell battery in. I'm gonna use a Velcro strap around the battery to secure it in place uh, for the aerobatic maneuvers and stuff. You wanna make sure that's nice and secure. All right, now check this out, it looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna finish this off with a set of decals. I'm gonna show you guys a quick video on how I do the decals. I use a gravity designer. I take a picture of the control source I'm working on uh, and then trace out the basic shape. Uh, and then this is a checkered symbol that I made for the front wing, the main wing. Uh, and then I'm just copying it onto the shape here just to get the same checkered look. Uh, and then I can just change the colors and make it any color I want to. Uh, and then you can make uh, any lettering that you want to very easily. And then I just export this out as an SVG file, which is a vector file that has cut lines programmed into it. Uh, and then I just send this off to a decal shop uh, and then they can print it out on a material and I just put them right on the airplane.
All right, today we're gonna be using a four cell 2200 milliamp uh, battery by Saipom. Saipom batteries are really good. I've used them before in my other builds. Yeah. They have a really good uh, run time and they last a long time. I've had my other ones for like seven, eight months and they still last just as long as they're brand new. So we're gonna throw this four cell in here and go have some fun with this plane. Alright guys, looks pretty good. Now we're going to throw it on the scale and see what we get for a ready to fly weight. <laughs> Just jumping around a little bit, right, right around 1500 grams. This flight here is actually the second flight of this plane. Uh, the first flight I took it up on a three cell 2700 milliamp battery uh, and it flew okay, but uh, with this motor and propeller setup, it flew much, much better on four cell. Uh, that gives it about 3,050 grams of thrust uh, and it just flew way better, had much more performance. Uh, I was flying it around like 50% power and then I could just give it full power and do some cool aerobatics and stuff. Uh, this plane has a wide range of motors you can set up in it. Landing right to left. Hey guys, that thing flew so well. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, this build video, and we'll see you guys in the next build.